All right, welcome to the Sheets Help YouTube channel. And right now we're going to be going over the year frac function in Google Sheets. And you will use this if you have two dates and you want to find out the number of years, including the fraction of a year between the two of them. All right, so we have some examples here. And the first thing that you want to look at, especially if you're having problems with the function, is that the first two inputs, so the start date and the end date, are valid dates. You may have something typed in here that's not actually converting to a date. So we'll just check these. We'll go to format and conditional formatting. And we'll just say, look, this range, let's format the cells if they are, go down to custom formula is, and use the is day function, which returns a true if it's a date. You want to start the custom formatting in the upper left hand corner of your range and we'll click done. So all of these are valid dates. So we know that these functions, they should work okay. Uh, but if you're having problems, probably do that. And let's double click in this function again. And we'll look at the last parameter. This is the one that's probably a little bit confusing if you've never used your frac before. And we'll go over to the supporting website for Sheets Help and we'll look at the explanations for these different date conventions. We don't need to go through all of them, but the one that you would typically use if you're just using this to say calculate an age would be one. So that's the actual number of days over the actual number of days in that particular year. You only wanted to use this if you have a specific financial function. So the last example that we'll go through, we'll use zero, um, just saying that it's a United States uh, financial convention. And what that does is it puts, it only counts 30 days each month and 360 in the year. So if you're in the, the end of the third month, it'll be 90 over 360. Uh, once you get to the 31st day, it stops counting. All right, so it's a little bit weird. You would only use it if you needed to. So let's look at the difference between these day count conventions. And we will just drag this formula down. So this formula is referencing C5. So in this one, it's going to use zero. And then the rest of them, it'll use one, two, three, and four. And as you can see, they're pretty close. So if you accidentally use the wrong one, it's probably not a big deal. And some of them produce the exact same result. But that's enough of the different day count conventions. And we'll go down and we'll do a practical application, which is just calculating age. And we want to use the full abilities of your frac here. So we want the age and the portion of the subsequent year that it calculates. You'll see what I mean. So let's do year frac. And the start date will be this person's birthday, right? So they were born in 87, young person. And then the end date will be, let's do it today, right? So every time you go into the spreadsheet, the value of today will update. So this date will always be a current. This year, this age will always be current. And we'll say today, to the today argument doesn't need anything. You just need to start and end the parentheses. So that will return whatever day it is that you're creating this. We'll use the day count convention of one because that's actual over actual. Close this off and this person's over 34 years old, but not quite 35. And if you want to display their age and whole years, one is you could use the date diff function and specify the output in years. So I'll put a link to that video uh, in the upper right hand corner and I'll put it in the description. But if you want to do it using your frac, it's not hard. You just wrap the function in the INT function. So this is just um, converts the whatever's inside of it to a whole integer by rounding down. So now we'll do your frac. And we will use the same start date. So that's A27. End date will be today. The convention will be one. All right, so this is a similar result, but it's, you know, someone's not gonna say their age is, hey, I'm 34.8 years old, right? So if you want it to be a whole number, just use that function. And as I'm going through these, you'll see that I'm using dates by referencing cells that they're in. If you wanted to type these dates in, that could be another problem if you're um, 
experiencing difficulties with this function. Let me get back into the cell. Let's say you wanted to input 10, 11, 87, uh, but you had to type it directly and you need to surround it with quotes. If you don't, it's going to do division on those numbers, not knowing that it's a date. So, so as long as you surround it in quotes, that'll work too. All right, so let's go on to this last example. And this is using year frac to actually calculate the amount of interest expense on a loan. So what we want to do, we have the start date and the end date, right? So you need that for year frac. So that's the period of time over which this um, calculation has elapsed. And then you know the total term of the loan. And so what we'll do is we will say, we want the fraction of the year first, so we'll do year frac. I'm gonna say the start date is in D32. End date is, I wrote, today's date in here, but then I put it in E32, so we will use that. Now the day count convention here is going to be zero, and that is the, let's check, 30 over 360. It's a lot of times that's used in a financial setting. Don't ask me why. So we will do that and be a slightly different output, but I've actually tried it with a zero and a one, and it doesn't even change the sense on this example, so I want to get too wrapped up in it. We're going to take that fraction of the year. We're going to multiply it by the principal, which is in A32. That's the amount of the loan. Multiply by the rate, which is in C32. And in this case, we actually don't need the term. Uh, thinking about it, I'm not sure why it's in this example. But this is all we need. Let's uh, hit enter here. And it's $633.33 of interest incurred in uh, a little over a year. So if you think about it, it's a 5.7% interest rate. That makes sense. It would probably be $570 in the first year. It's added on a little bit more than a month on top of that. So to explore a little bit more about dates, I put a playlist on the screen that'll walk you through a lot of the concepts that you have to deal with to make sure that dates are working for you in your Google Sheet, not against you. And I'll see you in that next video. Thanks for watching.